Hey guys, it's NST with Never Stop Traveling, and today we are going to go over how to travel in different places around the world. This is the first of a series of travel videos or travel hacks that I'm making, and today we're going to talk about the differences between traveling in, say, Europe or Asia or Central America and the different countries that you can travel throughout there. One big difference between traveling in, like, Europe versus, say, Central America or Southeast Asia is the cost difference. The cost difference for transport to and from these countries can be around the same depending on the distance, but once you get to the locations or these destinations in Central America, it's drastically cheaper, or South America, it's drastically cheaper for lodging, for food, for transportation than compared to like Western Europe. Like Western Europe, it can be you know, the cost of transportation, food, lodging, everything I was going over is much more expensive or can be much more expensive depending on like how you go about transportation. If you're doing hitchhiking, obviously anywhere that's about the same. But in Europe, it's a lot safer versus in, in Central America or Southeast Asia, it might not be as safe to do that. But at the same time, like say you're taking a, you know, a train for uh, 15 minutes or a bus for 15 minutes versus it costing you know, like five dollars or two dollars or something, it might cost you 30 cents or 50 cents or something. I mean, I remember in Southeast Asia and in India, I think it was in New Delhi, and it cost around 15 rupees. It was like 10 rupees, but I got jipped off because I was a foreigner and they charged me 15 rupees, rupees, whatever it is, for a, I think it was a 40 minute ride on a, a local bus. And that's equivalent to, I think, about 30 or 40 cents USD. So it's like that versus, you know, 30, 40 cents being ripped off versus, you know, in Chicago going from, um, you know, going on an hour train ride for $8. Like that's, that's pretty crazy. Like that's a drastic difference. And then, I mean, you can get train passes and there's certain, there's different ways to um, deduce your, your cost of transportation in Europe or in the US. But still, it's like overall, it is gonna cost more in these areas and like first world countries versus, you know, like third world or just, you know, these areas. So, Southeast Asia, I love Southeast Asia and not so Southeast Asia, like Japan and Korea, really cool places to go, a little bit more expensive, but Southeast Asia in particular, you can travel there, you can get away with traveling there. And if you stay in the country, depending on how many times you hop from country to country because of the, the visa costs and the, the flights or the buses um, between the countries, you can get away with probably living in a country for, or traveling for definitely under $1,000 per month. And I've known people to do it for $500 a month. So take your lodging, for example, say you're in Southeast Asia and your lodging is, you know, $5 a day on average. You can just stay in some places for as low as $2, some places for as much as eight or 10, but say on average you're staying at um, places for five dollars a day per month that's only a hundred and fifty dollars and you can get away with spending about the same amount of money on food that's only another hundred and fifty dollars so if you excluding transportation that's you're only at three hundred dollars and if you're just staying in one area just exploring like a local you know like Kathmandu or New Delhi or you know one of these big big areas you can see a lot of it for especially if you're just taking buses or walking around or you know just exploring and whatnot you can stay in that area for a long period of time for not that much i mean your two big, biggest expenses food and lodging is gonna cost you three hundred dollars you still have two hundred dollars to spend on other things i know that's only about five or six dollars a day but depending on where you're at one dollar in the u.s is you know like 60 rupees or 30 rupees in india which is crazy it's like it's so much, it's such a, a drastic difference between you know, how, how far your currency will go in some of these places. So that's, that's Southeast Asia, uh, in particular in Japan and Korea, which is still Asia, but not so much Southeast. They are a little more expensive because uh, their economies are just doing a little bit better. It is a little more first world. You can definitely um, you know, stay somewhere for maybe $10 a night or, or 15 or $30 a night. But like $30 a night compared to five, one day of lodging in Japan can get you a week of lodging in one of these other countries. So that's just one thing to think about when you're trying to pick your destination and where you wanna go. The same thing kind of applies to Central America, depending where you're staying and how you book your lodging. 
you can stay places for, for very cheap. The same thing with like hotels. Even if you, you're just staying at hotels all the time, you don't want to go to hostels. And hostels, I'd recommend for the social atmosphere and just meeting people, especially if you're traveling by yourself and you want to go do some day trips with other people. It's a lot easier to meet people to do that with at hostels. But if you, you know, if you, if it's you and your girlfriend or you and a friend or a group or whatnot, and you want to do your own thing, you don't want to really meet other people, and you're staying at hotels or something, um, you can still get a way better price on hotels, and you know, some of these third world places versus first world, because it's just like instead of spending two hundred dollars a night, you might be spending twenty or thirty dollars a night, you know, depending on where you're at and how you how you get your deals. Europe. So Europe is great. I love Europe. I'm going back to Europe next summer i'm stoked like i'm gonna be up there for uh, a couple months who knows you know maybe longer uh, depending on how things go and you know where i end up going but you know western europe can be very expensive it can cost you twenty dollars to sixty dollars a night you know for a hostel which is crazy i mean like you can probably get away with staying somewhere from anywhere from 25 to 35 maybe 40 for a good place to stay at but like if just your lodging alone, staying in some of these, you know, like, like Ireland, France, or Germany, or, you know, some of these, uh, you know, bigger places in Europe, but if you're spending $30 a night, that's, I don't know what, 30, that's $900 a month. So if you're traveling through a month through Europe, just your lodging in and of itself could cost you up to, you know, $900 or $1,000. If you're spending around the same on food, you're going to be spending two grand a month in, in uh, Western Europe. I'm sure you can get away with, you know, spending less depending on how you do it, if you do it in groups or um, if you just get good deals. But overall, it is a lot easier and cheaper to travel in other places if depending on your budget. But like, you have to go to Europe. I definitely recommend it. Eastern Europe, you can see a lot of those places and the lodging is, you know, it's still cheaper. You can still get a place for 15 to $8, you know, depending which country and where you're at. And there's still beautiful things to see. I mean, there's just so much to see throughout Europe. I've barely touched Europe. I've seen a few countries there, and that's why I'm so excited for next summer because, I mean, you guys will get to go along with me and I'll be there for a few months traveling throughout Europe. I'll be seeing Eastern Europe, Northern, you know, Scandinavia, uh, Central Europe. I'll be hiking for a month across France and Spain. Granted, I've already been to these two places, but I'll be hiking across France and Spain. That's, that's like, you know, you're gonna be able to see a lot more of a place if you, like, you know, if you fly over a country, you see, you know, you just a glimpse of it. If you take a train, you might see a little bit more. If you take a bus, you might see a bit more. If you're driving, you can actually stop and, and check out different sites and whatnot. But if you're literally walking across a country, you can see so much more of the country. You can have so many more conversations. You can kind of, it's almost like, you're not living there because like living there is the next step up. If you live somewhere for a couple months or a year or something, that's when you can really dive and get deep into the culture and see how things are, learn a little bit of the language, learn how to make some of the food. That, that's just kind of my take on traveling in Europe versus traveling in you know Southeast Asia or traveling in the Western world versus traveling in um, you know, the Eastern or first world versus third world. So overall, there's just many, many countries you can travel to. I mean, almost almost 200 countries, depend who you ask uh, around the world. Third world, first world, Eastern, uh, Western, European, Southeast Asian, South American, Central American, African. I mean, like, you can even go to Antarctica. That's, you know, one of my, my big dreams is to go to the place that's not even a country. But anyway, I'm going off topic. It's great, you can travel to all these places. I definitely recommend it. There's so much to see and you only have one life. So, you know, why not get out there? This is Never Stop Traveling. Peace out guys, take care.